Welcome to our review on distance time graphs. Now the image you can see in front of you there then is a typical distance time graph. So on the x-axis we've got the time and on the y-axis we have our distance. Now what we can see in the first part of the graph there is that as the time is increasing then the distance is also increasing and it's doing so at a uniform rate. So we have that positive gradient there. And what that tells us on this distance time graph quite simply is that our object is moving away from the start at a steady speed. When we get to about 300 seconds, we can see we've got this horizontal line. Now, a horizontal line on distance time graph tells us the object is stationary, it's not moving. And the reason that we know that is the time is still increasing, but the distance is not. Then we come into this negative gradient for the third part of our graph, and we can see that what's happening there is the time's increasing, but the distance is decreasing. So that tells us that our object is moving back to its start point, and it's doing so again at a steady speed because it's a nice straight line. If we had a curved line on our graph, then that would tell us it was changing speed because that wouldn't obviously be a nice uniform traveling of a set distance in a set time. The only other thing we really need to know how to do in terms of our distance time graphs then is to calculate the speed. First thing to remember then is that the gradient of the line is the speed. So the kind of question you might get is, what is the speed of the object between five and 10 seconds? So the way we'd actually work this out then is looking at the graph first of all, you'd come up from five seconds on the x-axis and read off the distance it's traveled in that time, which is 20 meters. Then you'd do the same for 10 seconds and we can see that after 10 seconds, our object has traveled 40 meters. So first thing we need to do once we've got those numbers is work out the differences between them. So 10 seconds minus five seconds gives us the difference of five and then 40 meters minus 20 meters gives us a difference of 20. Then using our speed equals distance divided by time calculation, plug in our numbers. So 20 divided by five gives us our answer of four meters per second.